Okay, uh, ladies and gents, welcome to uh, Dynamics in Maya with uh, our very own Dan Schutt. Uh, I'll keep this brief as we've been uh, delayed today. Um, but uh, the webinar should be about 40 minutes long and there should be uh, a nice time, 15, 20 minutes at the end for Dan to answer any questions. If anything uh, comes up during uh, the webinar, do feel free to tweet us uh, if you may not want to leave your attention from one screen. So try for us to tweet or always feel free to um, message us after the webinar if something pops up. Uh, I will hand you over to Dan and you can press on. Okay, okay guys, um, yeah we're going to take a little look at uh, dynamics inside Maya. Um, we're going to be looking at a, uh, a tricky thing which is emitting fluid from collisions. It's not actually something that Maya can natively do so we have to kind of think a little bit outside of the box to get it to work. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and uh, create some geometry that we're going to be working on. So I'm uh, just going to create a ground plane. Scale that up, around about, about there. And I'm going to create some bricks. Um, these are going to just be polygon cubes. Um, just want to set this to a width of 2. And let's just jump in here, just make a few duplicates. Move that up to 0.5. Now, one of the fortunate things about the way Bullet works, uh, we can actually have our geometry literally sitting next to each other. So these these edges um, are sharing the same space. Um, most rigid body systems will get a little bit upset about that, but um, Bullet is actually pretty fine with it. Uh, so let's just create a few of these. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 that should do um, and I'm just going to duplicate some more up and actually I'll group that and just move that down 0.5 whoops sorry wrong way 0.5 minus 0.5 and just grid snap that across a little bit as well okay so now I've got those just going to duplicate and group the duplicate and let's have a few copies of these so one two three whoops five and another one Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Let's have one more and just duplicate that up. I'm just going to take the whole lot, not including the ground plane, and just group that um, to itself. Uh, I'm actually doing this just so that I can move these easily, um, move them into place about here. Um, I'm also going to scale the whole thing down. Um, let's actually let's scale that down somewhat like that and move this in here okay um, and I'm just going to get rid of the old groups and ungroup what I had here a moment okay so I've created a brick wall as I said the geometry is exactly on top of each other most um, Rigid body systems don't like that, but bullet, you can get away with it. Um, let me just make sure wireframe and shade is on so we can see what we're doing. Um, the other thing I'm going to need to do is just ensure that all of my history is deleted. Um, it's not absolutely necessary that part, but it's good practice too. Um, so I'm going to delete all the history in the scene. Uh, freeze the transformations on your objects. And this part is most important. I need to center the pivots on all of my bricks. Now the reason I need to do that is because it will use the pivot points as the center of mass and I just want to be sure that the pivots are centered on all of those objects. Okay so now I've got that um, I'm just going to group my brick wall up so I'll just group those guys and just call that bricks group. That'll be 
better. And I'm also going to create uh, an object that we're going to throw at the wall. So just create a sphere. Move that off to the side here. And now we're ready to start applying our rigid bodies. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to be using um, bullet to um, break this up and uh, to destroy it. Uh, so I'm going to need to load that in the plugin manager first of all. I'm just going to go to Window, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and look for bullet. There we go. Just going to load that and make sure it's loaded next time. There we go. Okay, and in my dynamics menu set, you should see, there we go, we have bullet. Okay, so I'm going to apply the, um, the rigid bodies. Now we need two types of rigid body for this. <coughs> um, first of all, we have our passive rigid bodies. A passive rigid body is an object that um, objects can collide with but um, isn't actually going to be affected by any fields or collisions itself so uh, that would just be things like walls floor ceiling anything that you don't want affected but you want objects to bounce off of so i'm going to select the ground plane and going to go to bullet and going to click on the box next to create passive rigid body okay so um, this object is my uh, passive rigid body um, the collider shape, I'm actually going to, actually, I want to set it to mesh, but as you can see, it will only work with static objects. So I need to go down to where it says body type, set that to a static body, which means it's never going to be animated. Um, and then I can then set it to mesh. Now, another thing that I also need to be aware of is the collider shape margin. I mentioned earlier that our object is able uh, to sit exactly in the same place as other objects. They can share the same uh, the same space. Uh, obviously they can't intersect but they can share the same space. Now we have this collider shape margin attribute. Um, this basically expands the collision shape outside of the object. Now in order for our objects to be able to share the same space I need to make sure the collider shape margin is set to zero. So I've just set that to zero and now I'll apply and close that. Cool. Okay, um, now the next type of rigid body is an active rigid body. Uh, I'm going to make my ball an active rigid body. Um, so an active rigid body is just a rigid body that has can be affected by things like gravity, fields, things like that, um, and can also be um, uh, collided with and will be affected by those collisions. So I'm going to select the object, I'm going to go to bullet, and this is going to be an active rigid body. So create an active rigid body, click on the box. Once again, I need to set the collider shape and so on. Um, so this time, I, technically, I could use a sphere. Um, it is a sphere after all. However, um, I'm going to use a hull. Uh, a hull is basically like a, uh, uh, a, a an optimized version of your geometry. So if you have an object that kind of looks mostly spherical and it's like 100,000 polygons, it will cut it down to a much lower resolution version of the same thing and allow it to collide. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be calculating masses of geometry for your collisions. So uh, I'm just setting that to hull. That should be good enough. Um, and the collider shape margin is already set to zero. So I'm just going to hit apply and close. Now, um, bullet does have inbuilt gravity. So when I hit play, you can see that drops drops like that. A um, little bit boring at the moment. Also, my playback appears to be, there we go, maximum playback speed is set to free, which means that it's not playing back in real time. So I'm just going to make sure that's set to real time. So I am seeing the motion as it should be. There we go. So that's how it should be dropping right now. 